And so we're trying to become that industry standard where it's like, okay, I'm a new up and coming content creator and I, I know I'll make it when I'm on that show. Oh, got it. So like, to, you, you can try to have the Oprah effect on Mo Focus. Well, it's like, you, okay. It's like, it's like, that's you know, kind of cool though. Let's say you have a hot single, like you have a hot track coming out. Okay. I do. And yeah. She and that played with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome to Yoel's Hangouts podcast. I am your host, Yoel Mother and I know him. What is good? Mm. I got my very special guest, guest Peter Mizako. I said that right. Surprise! You got that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Also yeah. known as I've PM. Had lot, I've had a lot of the practice. Streets call me PM. The streets call him PM, uh, aka uh, sound engineer, aka producer Poppy. Producer Poppy. A producer of uh, May Contain Action a podcast. Uh, who who would have thunk, man? This is who my this the, Peter is my original uh, guest. <laughs> you're like you're maybe one or two. I you've had a couple of appearances. One one we put in the files. I don't think we ever put it out, but one for sure you were no, on. No one one we for sure did because to this day Holly gives me shit for it. <laughs> for real? What yeah. did she say? Oh, she's like, uh, so today I was like, yeah, I'm doing a, you know, UL's podcast. And she's like, um, oh, you're going to talk about hoes and bitches. Oh, I was yeah. like, okay. I yeah. Was we like, didn't really talk about, uh, family friendly topics back then, but it was a, you know, it was we're a different it real. me. It was a different us. You're, you're wifed up now. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. You gave it all up. You got the kids. When I'm, when I say kids, I mean, little doggies, little corgis. Two little corgis over here. Which you know they will saying. probably bark, you know, th- throughout this at some point. So I haven't heard it yet, so it's not a problem yet. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're my original original guest. Uh, you have a special place in the uh, Yoel's Hangouts Hall of Fame. In your heart. Uh, not, not only in my heart, yeah, but that's not really because of the show. Mm. Um, not to get too sentimental here. Um, that got really corny. Even I know. Just saying it was that. cute. Though. Um, it was cute but uh it was needed yeah, it, it it was needed it's been a minute especially since i came through to the city and you like acted too cool bro okay I mean, don't even don't even try to front we'll we'll dress that later we'll okay. dress that right. later we'll just right, 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 right. um yeah he's in the special hall of fame not only because uh he's one of the original guests but because you know this guy helped me out with all my sound stuff what to buy uh, who to buy from, you know, what mics to get, what, you know, audio interface to get. I didn't yeah, know what, what the fuck what that was. Uh, this is a, just a road mic. It's like yeah. a boom mic that I use for the, uh, for cameras. Yeah. This is more yeah. for camera stuff. I don't, yeah, I don't have, I don't connect. I got to get a sure mic. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be the next on the list. This, this is the vibe here. Why you got to flex on me right now? Cause it's my life. I know it's, 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 it's a little pricey though, <laughs> but you know, it's worth it. Especially, you know, as I, t- as I, uh, move move forward in my progression yeah if you plan but, uh, on getting bigger that's the that's the goal oh yeah so i'll, I'll probably that's gonna probably be my next my next purchase but mm-hmm. uh, which i'm excited about but yeah man so welcome back uh we we are happy to have you man how does it Appreciate feel to be it. back i know you feel i know you feel like uh um very flattered to be back Oh, always. I mean, it's a pleasure to be <laughs> you, on the show. You, um, I just put that on you. <laughs> <laughs> you put that pressure on me. No, I mean, it's fun. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, remember proud those of you days? For, um, yeah, I remember coming home from White Owl at 12 at night and <laughs> recording something for two and a half hours. Thinking I knew was White Owl was going to get brought up. Oh, exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are definitely the days. Definitely lost, or, or, um, long gone days. That's definitely not the me anymore. Um, a lot Damn, of why are you acting like last... you were like doing heroin or something like relax bro because to be honest with you <laughs> i was going out way more than I, I ever had in my entire life but so was i bro we all go through that phase yeah but it it's was fine. like but it was like thursday you were OD, friday yeah, saturday tuesday yeah i mean the only days i took off were sunday and monday because i just felt like sunday and monday were the weird days that's true. You did you know, go like, out a lot. We would we would still go out on Tuesday to Taco course, Tuesday, and then, then go to Tube. Oh yeah, no, I, yeah. I was never. I was never. I think I. I think I caught you at like you're starting to kind of like taper off. Is when we became friends because we still went out, but at that point it was no, only no, the weekends. no. We were no, we were we were like buddy buddy. But the thing was, is you had to work at six in the morning. 
yeah at that nike for four days a week and so during the week was a no i would go out with taryn oh, um, yeah. our homie taryn yeah and so um man what is he up to dog uh, i just hit him up recently he's newly single so damn um, props to him he's a good looking kid out there if you guys want you know he's looking for someone a new, out there uh, yeah new June in portland a new a new boo thing so but yeah those are those are the old days and you know a lot's happened since a lot then of memories that, uh, though Love yeah, no, memories. I mean, I enjoy them. I enjoy the memories for sure. Yeah, it was fun. Like Miguel would uh, would randomly come Fucking through. Miguel, um, <laughs> I had to bring him up. <laughs> Anytime Bro. I hear that name, I get some slight like PTSD. Bro, so you know what's funny? Like one of so he was my roommate at the time. Yes, and uh, we did a podcast together. It was probably podcast number three. It was just horrible, like just horrible. And uh, the things we were talking about, Doug. I contemplated my podcasting career moving forward. I was like, am I really in a position where I want to endorse this type of like the things we were talking about where he, well, let me rephrase that. The things he was talking about, he was talking about. Yes. Not you, him off the walls. And I was like, is this really going to, are people going to be this comfortable? Are people really going to talk about this? Like every, you know, cause in the beginning you don't really know. But then I was like, okay, no, that's literally just Miguel. This is not a normal podcast thing. I'm, I'm down to, you know, get a little explicit, but. No, he doesn't. Dog. He doesn't have a filter. He's never had a filter. No, never. Which, you it's, know, is it, cool, but. But it also bites him way more than it's cool, to be course. honest with you. That but, thing. Yeah, it, it, it gets back to him way too much, but I love him to death. He's my, he's my favorite guy. He's the reason why I'm friends with all you guys. Um, that's funny. So yeah. I have to give him props. He has to he deal. has to stand out that way. You know, that's how yes. he sit out of the basketball court. But I mean, he was terrible at basketball, but he always wanted to play with me. Um, especially when I just moved down to Corvallis. So I thought I thought that was really nice. And he always talks shit, so you knew you <laughs> loved you it. knew that aspect of the game he was gonna cover. But he was my Patrick Beverly. But uh I wanted to talk to you about bro, how's how's it going with the uh the podcast that you're producing? It's good. Um, it's called Make Contain Action. We uh, we have two hosts, two Twitch partnered hosts, uh, Action Jackson and Trevor May. Trevor May plays professional baseball for the Minnesota Twins, um, and then Action Jackson is just uh, one of the original partnered streamers on Twitch. Um, been around for I think six, seven years now. So he's been super OG um, day one. And then Trevor, like I said, also a partner. He started about four or five years ago. Um, but again, he's a professional baseball player pitching is this thing for the Minnesota twins. And so that's kind of his day job. But anyways, um, it's good. I got into that community because of Fortnite, um, which I still play every day. And I just started watching it. Seriously. Like I played, it's the reason why I have, I, I have a $2,000 gaming PC right here just to play the game. That's funny. And I only use it just to play the game at a high competitive level. And that's funny. I love so, how like you, but you could have used any excuse to keep playing. You're like, this is why I have a job. Now I have to fucking play. Every no, I mean, and, and I play like I played it for three hours before I got on here. It's just because all my friends play it. Like everyone I know plays it. Yeah. That's and, how you hang out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been that way for two and a half years now and it's going to keep being that way. Um, you know, you know, what's interesting to think about dog is kind of what I was wanted to talk to you about. Like esports has taken like, it's almost gone, you know, you know how like we watch sports, we like mm-hmm. to, we, we, we like to feel like we're in the game, like we wear jerseys, you know, they represent our hometowns. It's like, we feel like that team is a part of us. Now, literally with video games, it's like, you can actually like play and represent yourself in an actual like practical level when before it's just like yeah. asso- association and connection through location. Yeah, I mean, I I I see where you're getting at as far as like the sports side of esports when it comes to like Madden, uh, the 2K League, and FIFA stuff. But in in reality, the biggest esports are actually not sports. There are shooter games. Um, are there MMORPGs, um, which are like League of Legends, World of Warcraft, um, CS:GO, um, uh, Overwatch, Fortnite. Like all these games that you probably never really heard of besides Fortnite, but they're bigger than anything else in the world. And that's where esports dominates, especially League of Legends. League of Legends is the number one esport in the world. Mm. Um, it's the highest grossing, it makes the most money, it's the most viewership. It is what everyone flocks to when they're, you know, their champions uh series is on. 
And I think that is, that's, you know, that's Supreme CSGO and Overwatch are two shooter games, which are there. Actually, Overwatch was um, sponsored by ESPN for a while. They had ESPN like uh, city teams mm. and that, that kind of flopped that, that didn't really pick up. And then this, this new one, Fortnite is now what the youth are gravitating towards too. So that's like their new sport. It's like, yeah, look at it. Like League of Legends is the NFL. Yeah. It's no one's gonna top it. Like it's going to be number one, Re- like regardless of whatever comes around. Number one, that then Fortnite Why? is like the NBA. You just it's just the first. It's just the thing. Got you. It's I thought like, Fortnite was that thing. No, it's it's, it's League of Legends by far. Everyone who's a gamer plays League, and that's that's just like it's just it's the just the, like. It's just the thing. It's like what you want to be when you're an esport professional. It's like you want to be in league. <laughs> and it's like, you know, over That's in Asia. So nerdy. I love it. Well, over in Asia, they're, they're treated like superstars. Gods. Yeah, gods. Wow. Like ninja. And bigger than ninja. That's funny. That's and so crazy, it's, you man. know, and then Fortnite, the reason why Fortnite does so well is just because um, the content creation side of it, which is what we do with the podcast. We, do, we interview these people um who do the content creation side of you know esports or just twitch or youtube or pretty much anything that they want to do we just kind of interview them and see their path but a lot of them say they got big off the Fortnite boom oh god you know, interesting makes sense twitch twitch has been around for seven what seven eight years it was used to be justin tv and then it got bought out by amazon and now it's twitch tv mm. um but it was always kind of this niche market where people would come in and watch guys play video games and you'd be like, oh, you're watching someone play video games? Like, that's kind of weird. Like, it was always a weird thing to be like, why are Bro, you it watching? It was a weird thing like a couple of years ago, dog. So I remember was, I posted, I, I showed you, or I put on my story of my yeah. cousin like watching someone play Fortnite, and i was yeah. like what the fuck is wrong with this kid yeah and so and then you, you said and then you like replied to the story and you're like that's the future man but i mean i'm and telling like, you fuck. like this was like two years ago yeah so where the Fortnite boom happened was um Fortnite just became this new game it was three years ago actually a couple weeks ago three uh, three years ago it came out um and a lot of people were playing it because it was a lot of fun you can play with your friends there was no real pressure and then drake kind of got onto it with ninja and travis mm-hmm. scott and juju smith schuster um and, and they all played a squad game and that became the highest viewership record on twitch to date wow. um on ninja's channel because he was playing with all of them and wow. that that kind of made a lot of people sit back and go oh i'm actually watching a video game right now like yeah. they they weren't th- like they didn't go on Twitch to think of oh I'm like I'm gonna watch Drake play a video game but like they're sitting there and thinking no like I'm going to go enjoy these guys doing something yeah if that makes sense so it didn't really become about the video game it became more about Ninja it, it became you know more about the content creator mm. um, and that's that's what I told you it's the future you know these 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 kids they lock on to streamers like Doctor Lupo Tifu Pokimane Nade Shot you know, Tim, the tap man, um, all these big time people, Ninja, they like lock onto them. They sub to them monthly and that's their source of entertainment. Yeah. You know, they can play whatever they want. They can just talk, but that's their source of entertainment. Like XQC is another big one. These, these random people you've never heard of that are actual gods. Yeah. (laughs) And you know, it's, 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 it's the new form of entertainment. And a lot of companies are now noticing that and trying to sponsor them. And, um, it's, it's where we try to come in with the um, with the podcast. We're trying to be the uh, kind of the late show, yeah. If, of, if that makes of sense. Twitch, so, of, yeah, uh, so like yeah, streaming. content creation in general. Just we want to be the the show. I mean, we've had the biggest content creators on Twitch and YouTube on our show. Like we've had the cream of the crop because of who the hosts are, who they've played with and connected with. And yeah. so we're trying to become that industry standard where it's like, okay, I'm a new up and coming content creator and I, I know I'll make it when I'm on that show. Oh, got it. So you're like, to, you're, you can try to have the Oprah effect on my focus. Well, it's like, you, okay. It's like, it's like, That's you know, kinda cool though. let's say you have a hot single, like you have a hot track coming out. Okay. I do. And yeah. She and that played with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then you might need a little anyway. bit of attitude. But <laughs> let's say let's say that thing goes number one in the nation, okay? And then two weeks later, you're on the night show with Jimmy Kimmel performing. 
like th- that's your moment yeah. of like i kind of fucking made it yeah, 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 yeah you're like oh yeah like, like that's so that's the kind of goal i set to have with this and it's and it's working like we've we've had a really really good following we have a lot of sponsorship opportunities and it's it's, it's really clicking um we just got to keep getting bigger and bigger with it and we just started a live show with it too so i'm putting more on my plate but it's worth it yeah um so it's 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 definitely definitely going to be a f- next five to ten year thing this this thing is not ending anytime soon for sure for sure um so. i haven't seen any like videos or do you do you do any video stuff or are you just now we do so we do it on youtube we, we, we just started streaming it on twitch um you do multi cam or what Multicam, yeah. I have a little stream deck here. I can uh, swap back and forth on OBS between Perfect. certain people. Um, we uh, we we go on every single podcasting site besides like a couple of like niche ones that no one really cares about. Um, the major ones, Apple, Spotify, Google Play, all, all that kind of stuff. Then we have yeah. them on YouTube and Twitch. So we're trying to like, I mean, at first we were trying to get everyone to go to the podcasting um, uh, platforms like Spotify and Apple because then we can um localize the numbers and figure out what exactly we're worth and um it's working yeah and so we we did that at first and now we're kind of trying to make up for the video aspect and be like okay now go to the youtube go to the twitch for sure because we've gotten such a great following on those and on twitter like i run the twitter page and i've amassed like just under 5k followers in a matter of like less than a year and and it's just because of memes and just because i've been able to create a culture on the page um and so i definitely want to see that expand as well but it's yeah it's honestly a lot of fun trevor and paul working with them is great i i do it for free right now um i hope that changes in the future for all of us but you know this right sponsorships have to come along well technically i don't do it for free because we're sponsored but it's not anything significant um gotcha. but yeah manscape so <laughs> hey they uh they reached out and, and we have a couple big ones lined up that we're trying to get going but i can't say it i'll tell you after but i can't say it on here gotcha um so that's cool though damn y'all moving and grooving yeah i think that's i think that's a cool like way to think kind of ahead in the sense of like okay like we want to be the late show we want to be like the place where people want to be on Mm -hmm. to feel like they kind of made it and you know that's a good goal to have and especially like since you guys already kind of have that credibility like it's something you guys can do like really off the jump Mm-hmm. because of like who the hosts are and, and everything yeah i mean we're we're like we're trying to get ninja on the, uh one of the next episodes and like yeah. we we're like we're texting with them that's like how close we are with them that's cool and it's like you know it, it kind of shows you how small of a world it is and i've been you know you and i I've, I've i've talked with this uh before with you but one of our good friends moved to la you know who i'm talking about yeah um and i was kind of against it i was like hey yeah like i don't think you need to do that like i don't think it's necessary to create a brand to move like i've i've hated this notion that moving to la or a bigger market is going to all of a sudden make you like more successful if if that's the case you know always like you know like i get people like you know it's, it's like you I totally understand. Like, if you want to get into acting, that's like I totally get. If there's a certain area in I'm the world, well, you, like, it, like it, Chaz, devils, like devils too. in the details, devils in the details. Well, yeah, I got but like you. those people that yeah. go here thinking like, come, come, success. Like you're gonna say, be here for a couple of weeks, couple of months, and like the red Boom. carpet's gonna like, yeah, yeah. of course, not like saying. every day. Our, our our mutual friend will be like, hey, when are you gonna move down? Like it's time, and I'm like, no, it's not. Like it's never going to be time. I don't need to do that. That's the old way of thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, like, you don't, you don't have to by any means. Everything I've done is arguably more successful than a lot of the other things that a lot of other people have done while moving down there, and I've done it with the comfort of this fucking seat. Yeah, for sure. Because you just got to know, you just got to work with the platforms. I think that's what it is nowadays. There's so many platforms to get noticed on, to get exposure, to connect. You yeah. just got to really find the way to make it happen yeah. and be smart about it and don't burn bridges. And in, in my case with Paul and Trevor, these are two big guys and I'm just a nobody who's in a Twitch chat. You ain't a nobody. No, but like at the time I'm a nobody, but I spent a year developing a relationship yeah. with these guys in the stream. And then I made them kind of these spoof remixes because I was like, you know what? I like being creative. I like watching them. I'm going to do this. And they loved it. 
Nice. And then um, I met Paul out in Seattle for a convention and we hung out all day and it was great. Like I got to connect with him. And then a couple of weeks later, Trevor was like, Hey, we're doing this podcast. Do you want to be the producer? And I was like, yep. And then that was how it started because I had spent that year prior working to kind of create this connection. Yeah. You know, I didn't go the quick, easy route of like, no, let me just move to Seattle and eventually I'll run into someone who's a little bit bigger. No, nah. you know, no, yeah, you got to play, you got to pay your dues in the sense of like, you got to do the thing first and then the opportunities kind of come. Yeah. Like so we talked about this too before, like even with, uh, it's funny, the last time we talked about Amine, remember? Yeah. Like he was making music and he was doing his thing. And then once things kind of started to like, he moved, gain momentum, then he moved. Yeah. But he, like, but he moved back. <laughs> oh, did he really? Yeah, he lives in Portland now, but still, like I. No, yeah, I yeah. mean he's a thousand air, or mm-hmm. you know, he he's chilling. Like if he's smart with his money, like he's and, already chilling off of that one banger, and he's and, he's he still makes music, obviously. But yeah, like for like it, moving somewhere is not gonna for me. Like I was kind of doing my thing, and then I was like, okay, like collaborations will be easier. I like a competitive environment. Um, and you know i like i like i feed off of the energy of where i'm at but that doesn't that doesn't mean i'm delusional waiting for opportunities and like just hoping and praying it's just for me based off the circumstances that i had in my life i was like well shit let me move you know it'll be a good experience i can always move back but um yeah i think that's a good point because I think the, the the key to what you just said is the fact that you did the work first, right? Like you did the yeah. work, you put it out there, you know, you put it in front of the right people. And then, and then people were like, okay, like, Hey, like, let me give you a shot. People yeah. want, people want the shot. And then they think they're going to all of a sudden do the fucking work. Well, in, in the Twitch community in, in particular, it's, it's, it's a lot of people who are like, Hey, how much money do I have to give to you for you to play with me? that's 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 like a weird no-no for you know the community like someone can donate a thousand dollars to ninja and be like let's play and he'll be like no but but like but like thank you for the grand wait 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 time out so people can like say that one more time the first part so people so people donate to streamers all the time just to like either talk to them get their attention or to kind of be like hey i support you like take like cam girls yeah, it's, gotcha. it's, it's, it really is. Like, it really yeah. is. And so with that comes the kid who has their mom's credit card, you know. Yeah. And is like, hey, what's $50 to my mom if I might have the opportunity to play with Ninja? Yeah. So I'm going to shoot my shot. And then the Ninja's like, no, thanks. Sorry. Wow. But like, th- but like thanks deep. for the money. And so like what you said before is a lot of kids, a lot of people in general on that platform immediately just shoot the shot yeah they're like hey i stream too even though i'm not like a partner i'm an affiliate or i'm not even an affiliate and i get one viewer you should collab with me because we're both streamers it's like no like like there's standards to this shit yeah there's levels um but 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 i agree it's like i there's plenty of people out there who make music and plenty of people who can produce something like i'm doing like it's not a super difficult job the only difficult part for anybody else is they're not going to have the same vision i do yeah like they're not going to have the same path or, you know, things like that, but anyone can do it. But the reason why I got chosen was because everybody else in chat was like, no, this is the guy because mm-hmm. they all know me. Like they all vouch for me. They all trust me. And it just, it just snapped like it's that. It's a fucking ecosystem. In there. It is. It's, it's a total ecosystem. Like I am beloved in Paul and Trevor's chat. And then that translates to Tim, the tap man's chat. Who's the number one Twitch streamer on Twitch. Wow. Sometimes it's funny and- that you can have a kid like, hey like no people that are in the chat it's like is it like yeah. knowing people in the comments of like a youtube video yeah i mean like my my like i don't i'm i'm not here to say that i'm like some big fucking name anywhere i go it's like oh my god there he is but it's like there's some chats that i will pop into and it's like oh my god like it's him wow and it's like you wow. know it, i'm it, talking about a fucking celebrity it, it, and there's quite a handful and you know i've been able to be lucky to meet these people who are big and it's kind of helped me push my own name but again it's not it's that's not my goal like my goal has never been to be my own streamer i think it'd be great eventually if i if i do make money from this podcast to quit my job and do my own thing like that but i'm not trying to clout chase i'm just trying to build this thing 
Of course, of course. And um, yeah, but but Twitch in general is is this small little ecosystem where everyone in, they everyone has a subset community, and those get intercrossed all the time. Interesting. Um, so there's there's plenty of communities that I'm known in, and there's a bunch and a whole lot that I'm not. <laughs> wow. And it's just a matter of where you're at and what time you see my name. You know. So so you don't get paid for this? No. Dang respect. Well, okay, we do because Manscape technically, but it's nothing significant. Who's we? You personally? You Me, do Trevor, not get paid and Paul. We we all have ownership on it. Oh, okay. You have equity in that. Yep. And the so, IP. Uh, we just I'm not the majority. They are. But, Got it. Um, you know. Oh, okay, that. that's good then. Yeah, yeah. No. 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 For sure. I don't know. It was like I don't know. It was you guys restructuring it that way. I was yeah, like, are you I, fucking kidding me? You need I to think, get paid. I think we'll be, and trust me, it's it's the running joke. They're like, how much are you paying him? You need to like double it. Because <laughs> I think like, I'm I'm doing everything. Like no, no, yeah. sh- like no jab to Trevor and Paul because I love them and they do great. But literally all they do sometimes is just talk and I do everything else. Damn. But well, I mean, they're, yeah, they're I love the names, it. right? I, exactly. If it, yeah, if, so it's all good. if you they weren't there, else. it would never be the show. Yeah, for sure, man. Have so, you, do you know uh, Call Call Her Daddy? You know that yeah, podcast. I've heard of it. You've heard of that whole drama with like barstool sports, like. No, I don't really listen to those people. But, no, I mean um, I don't either. But there was like a big drama. So so caller daddy had two two hosts, right? Yeah. And then one of the hosts like threw a bunch she of bullshit. Left, right? Like she left. She wanted yeah. a ton of money. They wanted like, uh, they were like it was just a huge podcast, and it still is. And they were getting paid like five grand a month or something like that. And they owned like none of the IP. And then like two years later, essentially like the girl that left just like was really sabotaging the whole thing, like just fucking it up. And it was yeah. just, it was super funny. But yeah, they like IP was like this huge conversation of like, we own call her daddy the name. We own like all of these like, catchphrases. Does. Yeah. yeah. Catchphrases and things that you say. So that actually does matter, you know. The only way the only way that would change for us is if let's say, I mean, this is the reason why I can't tell you one of them is a certain company that is interested in us um might have the ability to do that because they have a lot of funds. Yeah. But I still think at the end of the day we wouldn't do that because um unless actually I wouldn't say we wouldn't because if I mean if the bag's <laughs> big enough, if the bag's big possible. enough, yeah, we're doing it. And I don't think we're going to look twice, but I, there, there are plenty of companies and that's kind of what I like that would look at us and go, Oh, I want that to be the voice of our esports division or our, you know, content creation side of things. Like, like when, when you want to listen to that, that's, those are the two guys you're going to listen to. That's the show. Got you. So um, they want to be like the John Madden and like Kirk. Herbstreet. I, I want them to be. Yeah. That's yeah, that's no, Michael, sure. and I want us to be nominated for an esports award this you year. You know, but listen, see, see, people are very like uh, traditional in the sense of like kind of wanting like a you know maybe for a little bit maybe I mean you can always do both right like you can be the host of that but still also have the podcast. I think that's optimal. Yeah, because for me, I'm like, oh, like it'd be really cool to be a host, but also have my podcast. Uh, but at the same time, it's like if my podcast is to a place where, you know, maybe, you know, these like complex, you know, all of these different, you know, uh, you know, uh, Buzzfeed, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like uh, yeah. media companies. They said like, Hey, like we want you to cover hip hop or, you know, some other urban shit. Cause I'm black. And I'd be <laughs> like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I'll do that. And then like, but I also would want to keep my podcast because that's something I can control. Like for you guys, I'm sure like, it'd be cool to get a co-sign of like an e-sports team, you know, but at the same time, it'd be we still cool do, to have yeah. your podcast. You know what I mean? We wouldn't do an e-sports team. Um, that's way too Or specific. something like that. You know what I meant? Like, you get it what I'm trying be, to say? Yeah, it would be like a company that sponsors um, content creators, like mm. G Fuel. Um, like an event? No, like G Fuel is a supplement company that sponsors gamers for like energy drinks. They're arguably the biggest sponsor out there, like Logitech, um, Astro headsets. Um, oh, so you would have them. So you would keep your podcast. Yeah, but it would then, just be sponsored by them or be, oh, okay, be affiliated cool. with them. Got but it, like got I it, said, got there is one. That, that comes with you. less control though. Yes and no, because there is one that I will tell you that we're very close with, but um, it's, it's right, you know. I, I can't tell you. 
You just said you'll tell me. Oh, not I'll on tell you after. Yeah. Oh shit, we're filming my show. My bad. I forgot. Yeah. So it's, it, it says recording right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> um. So that that could be that could be the the break of like the fucking lifetime. For me. Yeah, of course. And I am trying so hard to make it work, but I have to be diligent with it, and I can't force anything. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people who want to get involved in Twitch and content creators in these sports. A of course, lot of companies, of and of um, we're trying to be that stepping stone to. Well, if you want two voices that that are going to get the market on everyone who's new, we'll be your guys. There you go. And I think that's, that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of where we're going. So, got you. Well, uh, let's shift gears here. I want you to address some uh, things that I've been thinking about. I wanted to. I think there are going to be some hot takes for you because I, 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 I just I don't hot takes. I just I just I just I feel it in my bones. I love some hot takes. You know it. Do you think so? Did you see the meme going around about the Seahawks game having more views than the actual NBA Finals? Yes, I've seen that. So that got me to thinking. I was like. Do you think that the NBA should have like fewer games, fewer minutes? Because for me, like, spe- okay, look, listen, hear me out. Okay. Hey, when was the last time you watched a full basketball game on TV? Don't fucking lie to me. Other than the NBA Finals, okay, or playoffs. Literally, literally almost every game in this playoffs, in this playoffs, playoffs. Yeah. Literally almost every okay. game in this bubble before the fucking bubble. I mean. Often enough to rare. where I cared about it. I mean, I'd watch rare. every Blazer game. Rare. Thank you. You just said I, it rare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look, I've been I've been sports betting like crazy recently. And uh, see, I think say, that's gonna yeah. pick it up. I think let's say you know, fantasy let's say I've been sports watching. betting. I think that's gonna definitely pick not fantasy. Like I'm talking real money, not fantasy. Like the yeah, Lakers better win by seven or more. I um, got you. I got you. So there, I think sports betting is legal in a couple sp- states, and now it's going to go to more states. I don't know. I don't it's, know. How it's that works. federally legal, but it's up to the state. <laughs> it's like weed, so, bro. Yeah, it's stupid. It's like weed right now. Um, I, I don't know. I just I do I, have I a just, hot take on that. There's a lot of games, bro. I do have a hot take on that. All First right, of all, it. I want to say fuck Clay Travis. I don't know if you know who that is. Fuck him. I, I don't. I want to put that on record. If you're gonna make a little clip out of this, out of your like your Instagram, yeah. make it this first thing. Fuck who Clay is Travis. Who is that? He is this fucking Fox sports reporter, but was yeah. a wannabe sports reporter who is incredibly, uh, how do I say this? All lives matter, kind of fucking. But I all lives do matter. No, I'm just kidding. Kind, kind, <laughs> kind of like he's 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 the he's the uh, I'll never wear a mask, Corona bro. Like you're a pussy if you wear one. It's like, funny how shit, bro. The most random shit gets and political. He believes that LeBron James is like China's puppet, and he's a Fox fucking analyst. <laughs> and I'm like, this dude's a fucking joke. Yeah, so, what made you think of that? So, because he constantly talks about the NBA ratings, and he's like, yeah, the NBA is down because they put Black Lives Matter on their court. And I'm like, no, it's not why. And they go, no, no, it is. You just don't like, like get woke and stay broke or whatever it is. And it's like, no, it's not what it is. Every sport's down. NASCAR is down 64%. Okay. The NHL was down 54%. The NFL has been down 34%. You want to know what's up? What, esports. Local news. Oh. <laughs> Local and national news are up 50%. You want to know I'm why? I'm sure. Because it's a fucking tense time right now. Bro. We're in an election year. We're in an election year and coronavirus combination think, of a lot of things and Trump's think about some wild shit the nba finals are were in october this year in the fall it's never been, it's never had that before yeah. ever they were rivaling what they're rivaling the nfl which dominates sundays mondays thursdays it's true they were rivaling the nfl when wins the finals finals were, were sunday right yeah got it got it got it they were rivaling the uh the nfl which everyone loves that's the number one king sport okay so that's number one that's gonna take it out number two the election year this is the biggest election year in so long it's the most wild bro exactly and so everybody is glued to their news about what's next yeah no one's we all knew the lakers were gonna win that series like regardless of the heat made it a series we all knew so we're kind of like okay they're gonna win so like what's happening with trump 
Like yeah. that's what we care about. Yeah. And I but agree. a lot of people spin that shit sideways and think, oh, it's because you're political that no one's gonna go. And it's like, no, shut the fuck up, bro. It's people, like, shut the fuck up. So I was watching this Ben Shapiro uh, video of fuck why Ben he's Shapiro, mo- why he's moving out. So I, so listen, I liked Ben Shapiro for a long time, and then once this like Black Lives Matter stuff started, I lost every ounce of i had a lot of respect for the guy like i actually think he's smart he thinks things through he has research behind what he says and then the black lives matter stuff goes on i said let me hear what he has to say you know maybe he'll be critical one area and then he was just saying the dumbest shit i've ever heard like saying like racism doesn't exist anymore systemic racism doesn't exist anymore something in the past these laws have been passed already so everything's fine i'm like whoa I did not like it woke me up at a how fucking like delusional and like out of touch this motherfucker was. Well, let me, uh, let me he be was honest. About, he, was, he was talking about why he left Los Angeles. Right. Yeah. And he was saying how like, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, uh, on a, uh, the homelessness situation, you know, it's not safe, which I was like, okay, that's cool. That makes sense. Makes sense. And then they're like the defunding the police has increased, has led to crime going up and all of this shit. And I was like, no really really that's how it works that quickly that's not nah, first of all defunding the police is never about demolishing the police i, I think that needs to be fit, like settled i do agree that the term defund the police is wrong it should just be reallocate the fucking funds of the police you should never work for a marketing firm or a brand firm because that's exactly. the most <laughs> if what i'm saying is you can't you can't make that cute and reallocate the funds of the police <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 2020. so so we we said defund the police because it was easier to hashtag which i totally get but a lot of people have taken out of context which i totally get too yeah but at the same time once once it's explained to you that look it's not about taking all their money and being like ha fuck you it's like no yeah. it's like okay instead of you going to call the distressed guy who's on who's high on drugs with with your weapon we're going to call a social worker out or instead of the domestic uh, you know abuse thing that you have to go out to at three in the morning we're going to call a psychiatrist out there or a therapist yeah because they they're going to get them settled down they'll handle it out if there is real abuse you guys can come in later and arrest who is who but a lot of these problems start with you get a cop at two in the morning who has an agenda who goes, oh, hey, this black guy beat up this white woman or, or, or whatever it is. And the guy in the back of his head's thinking, well, I got to get forceful then. Yeah. And then that's not the fucking play. Well, also, like, I think the biggest thing that I've been like, because my biggest thing is like as a business person, like, I'm like, how can I most effectively allocate the funds? Because living in Los Angeles, like this was one of the biggest things here, like defunding the police and like how fucking shitty the police Imagine system. Imagine Portland, is. yeah, like, but there's not a ton of like black people that are getting murdered by the police. Relative no, but to it's Los a Angeles. huge fucking hot topic here. Of course, of course. Uh, but so one of the things I was thinking about was like, okay, where can we put the funds? And like at the end of the day, bro, in Los Angeles, like people are on welfare, people are on you know all of these government. Mm -hmm. issued things because you know they have no other option there's no opportunity there's so much money being put into the police system that could be invested into the lower income communities because if you've been to los have you been to los angeles uh once cuddy like we in portland do not fucking understand no twice yeah i've been there twice yeah yeah no, it I've, is I've fucking nasty look, here. Bro. I will tell and I'm you like, story. yo, the government does not give a fuck about I, these areas. I will tell you a story in rest of peace of soul. When I would when I went down to uh, with Stuart, um, our friend Stuart, to uh, LA for the first time, um, he, we, you know, we, I was what 23, 24, whatever it is, um, and we landed 15 there years and, ago. It, yeah, something like that. Way <laughs> long, kidding. long ago. Um, and <laughs> our first enough. our first stop was he wanted to get this liquor bottle somewhere that he couldn't get in Oregon. Like, he was determined to get it. Stu. And I was like, all right, whatever. Like, let's hop in the rental car and we'll go out there. And we end up in fucking Compton. Like, middle of fucking Compton. And I'm like, where are we? He goes, oh, we're just going to hit this liquor store right here. Fully fucking barred up, barbed wired, everything. This fucking and I'm small sitting- Jew. I'm sitting here like, bro, I am a white guy in a fucking Prius in this parking lot. And that was the first time in my life that I sat there and thought, this is probably not my area. 
and <laughs> I probably should get out of here. Yeah, like I should probably reevaluate my priorities. Oh, that 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 feeling does not exist in Portland. Isn't no, that wild? No, so it's crazy. I came back and I I now live on. So I've lived on the west side of my whole life of Portland. Which, if, if people who don't know what Portland is, it's divided by a river, um, and it's one of the last segregated um, or one of the last cities in America to abolish segregation. So the river divided west and east, white and black. That's that's how Portland was set. The whites would live I on the west. Yeah, the whites would live in the west, big fancy hill, big nice houses. Blacks would live on the east, poor. Interesting. So now we're starting to catch up to it. And this changed in like 1980, 1970. Like that's how recent it was. Wow. And it, now I lived, starting, I lived on the west side. Yeah. So like really breaking the mold. Now you're starting to notice when you come up here that things are starting to get more gentrified over here. Yeah. Like I live on the east side right now, but 15 years ago, I, I never would. Just because yeah. mentally in my head, I thought that was not the place to be. Well, I went to but fucking it was, LA. But dog. I yeah, came I back and I'm say. like, bro, I fucking, Portland's fucking a joke. It's a joke. Bro, it's a fucking joke, dog. You know, I mean, I will tell you the only real evil people here are the fucking people that come out of state, the Proud Boys, the fucking white head, skinhead peoples that, that come out. And try to terrorize, you know, the LGBTQ uh, communities here. The black guys walking down the street, the black trans women walking down the street, like that's their goal. And those are the real fucking threats to the city. But you'll yeah. never hear about it. Yeah. And yeah, you know, it's and it's uh, sad. I transferred to PSU as you know for a little bit, and uh, yeah, I'd walk home from school, and there was like a story about like this like Ethiopian guy walking home and like getting his like getting essentially fucking killed to death yeah by a bunch of fucking skinheads and i was like damn that's wild like Indeed, yeah it's, it's crazy Portland but is, you know but i still feel safer there i'm gonna be honest than in most cities currently in Los i live in a nice area and to be honest i feel safe i would still feel i feel safer in north hollywood studio city than the most ghetto or no yeah the most ghetto place in portland i feel safer in than where i'm at now yeah I mean, I mean, I we're not tell you, there, so. I will tell you downtown Portland has gotten a little iffy recently and it's nothing to do with the protests, nothing to do with the, you know, the injustices. It, it, it all has to do with the pandemic going on and the shelters yeah. being closed. Um, yeah. A lot of homeless have taken over downtown. And I mean, a lot. Really? Everywhere you go, you see them in kind of their camps and they, they've all flocked to that area. Um, and wow. so there's, there's not much going on down there except for them um so yeah and the next time someone wants to tell you that portland's on fire just tell them to shut the fuck up because it's not true <laughs> it's funny because uh well i was just there like two weeks ago but last podcast i had i had people on that were from australia yeah and i was like hey have you guys heard of portland i'm sure you guys have heard of the protests they're like yeah of course like i heard it's crazy out there i'm like listen I was there two weeks ago. If you, there is something going on, but it's like in this small one of an area block. relative to the size of the city. And I'm like, it's not what it's. And I told them like, Hey, there's not a ton of black people there. So it's kind of ironic that it's that, incredibly that's getting the most, the most live is the one where that has the least amount of black people. I, I love my city and I love what they're doing as far as, vol- you know, voicing injustices, but I do go back <laughs> you to... You sounded so sad. You didn't want no, to No, but like, I, seriously, <laughs> I, I do go back to, it's just white people. It's only white people doing it. And yeah. it's, it's great because I feel like in today's age, you do need that voice if you do want to make change. Because people, th- those kind of people need to be fed up. They're like, look, if they're yeah. fed up, we're fed up. Like everyone's yeah, got, yeah. you know, everyone's I'm not fed against up, it. But it's just funny. It's there. Yeah. There is some irony to it. Or yeah, so, there's you know, comedy. Behind yeah. It. I posted like a Bill Burr was hella funny. When I, did you see the thing I posted? Uh, mm-hmm. No. Uh, Bill Burr was just making fun of it. It's like, why are all the people that are getting mad? Like just white women. Yeah. It's, it's true. Like, I mean, but, it's, it's you know, 100% I, I'm not, true. I'm not, I'm not hating, you know, I love it. But Appreciate voices y'all. gotta be heard. So yeah, so, I get it for sure. I hey, do, do you know what footy footy is speaking of my my uh, australian soccer so it's it's like this it's like a game it's like basketball and football combined and they play in australia it's kind of like rugby yeah i've seen it before bro i used I to suck. watch that i used to watch that with my dad at night at 11 p.m we used to watch it when he first got divorced 
Damn, yeah, that got that got dark. No, I mean no, but it was one of the best times of my life because it was so much fun to like sit Bro, there at 10, 11 p.m. and watch it. It looks so fun. So it, they sent me like highlights and like you yeah. know, training stuff. I was like, "Yo, guys, like this is like this can do so. This can make noise in the U.S. easily. The no, stadium is too big, but one, listen to this though. You dribble the ball. Two, it's like football, so there's contact. Three. There's no helmets or anything, so that the hits are bigger. Yeah. Four, there's no helmets, so people know who the players are, so you can create stars so and like you know. Well, yeah, I guess, but it's just, bro, it can make some noise in the U.S., man. I'm telling you, there's a lot of bar- You know, the entry cost is kind of a lot. You have to get like a fucking bigger stadium than a football field, but once you get that, man, I don't know, man. I you. I I don't think we're ever gonna see another sport. Be, cre- be created and then go mainstream again yeah other uh, than the, other than on the internet other than esports esports yeah but i there isn't going to be another sport that's going to dominate the big four which is or at least like soccer i don't sorry not soccer uh, say, football like basketball hockey and baseball hockey yeah hockey's guess, yeah, got, a, some got a big America following stuff. Um, nothing's going to crack that top four. The closest is soccer and soccer is not even new. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say soccer is older than all of them combined. Damn. Yeah. No, I mean like, dang, why do you think the U S is so bad at soccer? We don't care, but why don't we care? Because we love football. Uh, yeah, I guess. I think it's like the Britain thing. Like they kind of brought like rugby and shit. Maybe. I don't know. No, we just, we just love football. It's just, it's just the culture. Like we don't care about soccer. Did we, we start football? Yes. When? Um, I know you don't 1900s. have the year, but like, really? It's, it started in college. It, 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 so it started college first, then it went pro. It what was if like spike sport. ball goes like, no, <laughs> <mainstream. This> is, <laughs> hacky sack. Um, <laughs> That'd be so funny. Yeah, I know, what do right? you call it? Slack line? <laughs> no, I mean like it's, it's, we're, we're never going to see another sport be made. Damn. That's like, very like dark. It's true though. Like we, nah, we've, we've I think we've tapped out of our sport market as far as like what what we can create that people will watch and enjoy and want to play. Hmm. I can you see. Know? Like you can't bring that sport over here. You can't bring footy over here and expect it to be like all of a sudden, like all take of a off. sudden, the next thing. No, like the people who are going to be good in footy are just going to get paid to go play in the NFL. That's true. Like that's, that's true. There's already an audience for it. Yeah, like LeBron James could be the greatest soccer player of all time, but no one fucking wanted to play soccer in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> yeah, it didn't make sense. No. It has to start where you're playing when you're young and you're playing around people that have played it a lot and it's a competitive market. Yeah. Or else it's going to be but tough for it to catch on. I do think in the next 15, 20 years, we're going to see a lot of um, homegrown Americans be better than a lot of the Europeans in, in soccer. Really? Um, because I, I do think there is a cultural shift with the FIFA video game and yeah. you know, just kind of the dynamic that football is super dangerous where they're going to be more like, oh, yeah, I kind of want to be like That's the Michael funny Jordan that you soccer. say that. That's so you know? funny because literally I was thinking the other day because I was like, well, I have on my mom's side, I have like two professional soccer players and one of them actually ended up being a coach. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, shit, I, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to have my kid play soccer, 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 basketball. And then, like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a spring sport. I don't know. I don't know which one. Though. Maybe like, yeah, maybe baseball. you're like, I don't want him to play baseball. Baseball is both fucking boring. Um, you get the most money in baseball. Yeah, but like, guaranteed really, contracts. Yeah, but that's not really like a motivating factor for me. I would play baseball. Baseball is just boring, bro. I wouldn't I watch my kid play. I get it. I mean, I get, I get it's boring to a lot of people and I'm not the biggest fan of it, but at the same time, I'd still play it. You know what? I I don't think it's boring. I think it's just one of those games where I didn't grow up playing it and it's not really something you can just pick up and play because you need people play, you know, field ball. It's it's not basketball. It's not football. I mean, sorry, soccer. Like that's, that's why you think you'll have your kids play basketball. That's it. Yeah. I I think basketball, then esports. Wow. Yeah, okay. I mean, all year round. Like, what about fall and spring? Esports is whenever you want to. I guess. Damn. Yeah, you're gonna have them playing playing in the MAC, like on in fall and spring, and then like winter, you're gonna have them playing on the team, and then AAU. Dude, if though if if my kid comes out and he's like, 
top 15 holly's in tall whatever in you did whatever. that on purpose no but i mean like if <laughs> if my kid comes out and he's top 15 in whatever shooter game he's playing fuck it we're we're, we're, we're going all in to the finish exactly yeah, yeah, yeah no i have respect that i like like that. With with the nature of organizations that are coming around like FaZe and 100 Thieves, he's bound to get signed somewhere at his age. FaZe clean. And, yeah, and like all these, you know, Optic and um, um, Cloud9, like all these organizations that sign these 18, 19-year-old kids who are good. Like, Damn. fuck it. Yeah. So you're going to give your kid a video game ASAP? Yeah, I mean, if, that, if that's the way it looks. I mean, I... I don't see any issue with, you know, a parent nowadays being like, look, like I get the traditional sports are fine. And I definitely don't want to take my kids, you know, ability to wait to get physical exercise. That'd be stupid. Yeah. But like at the same time, if my kid is really fucking good at a video game. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, yeah, no, sorry. You got to go be bad at fucking soccer for an hour and a half. Yeah. Like, you, my my biggest fear it. dog is like, have you seen a uh, black mirror? Yeah. Have you seen the one where he's like forced to watch the ads in his room? Yeah, the cycling one. Yeah, so like my biggest thing is like I know for a fact this isn't even like hypothetical that the AI is going to get to a point where like it's going to be so addicting like you're not even like you're going to need like actual external forces to get you away from the game. I don't think we're ever going to get to that. I think we will. I'm very, very confident. I think there's a small niche of, you know, a a small group of people who do have that mentality. But um, I I think we're all genuinely aware of those dangers. And I think that's the I think there's going to be people like me that recognize that if we do not come to the realization that that is a danger and we don't find a way to address it, then... And a lot of people are coming to that realization. Like, I don't want, you know, um, you know that's that's become kind of the new thing is people who are streaming eight eight nine hours a day are like look i i need to break every once in a while and everyone and not, and not everyone's gonna be like yeah no fuck it it's just a video game you can play it like they they all understand it yeah. and um i think i think more than ever parents who have kids that play video games are now understanding that that's their social life yeah. like i especially in covid i don't hang out with a lot of people i just play fortnite and talk with them through this yeah you hang out with them virtually yeah, and there's 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 no shame in being like I'm gonna play with the boys for three or four hours, and that's how I hang out with them. Yeah, because my, we all uh, love what, to do it. My, one of my friends, he like does racing, and now that COVID's mm-hmm. been going on, he has like an actual like car Rig. simulator, yeah. and like he does like there's an like an announcer and like yep. like a live announcer, and like other people playing. There's like money on the line. He plays for people all around the world, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is hilarious but it's so fucking crazy that this is the world that's, we live in. That's, yeah, that's what we live in. Like, I, it's, I don't know why it's a shock to so many people. Like, it's no different than Zoom. I think I, I, I like to pride myself on being kind of like ahead of the game and like knowing that these things are coming. But like, I've just, I don't play video games. So I was behind on the whole like video game, realizing how big of a yeah. deal it is and like all that shit. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be honest about that. No, I mean, like, and and you can, anyone can play. Like, no one's. I might do FIFA, but I want to stream it at the same time. Yeah, and and that's the beauty is there's. But I'm going to get shat on. No one cares. No, I care. If you're competitive, but if you're funny, but if you're funny about it and you're a great content creator, people will watch you and people will enjoy being there. Some of the some of the people that I watch are some of the worst fucking gamers of all time. Terrible. Well, I, might, I might have to have you uh, help me out, produce it for me for free. I'll give you equity. <laughs> I'd not pay you. <laughs> write it. Write it in. A, write it in. Bold. Write it on a, a yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. I mean, that's that. That's kind of the world. Is you know, content creators are going to be running this world soon. It's 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 the new influencer. It's the new rapper. Um, yeah. Everyone's trying to be a streamer now. No one's trying to be a rapper anymore. Yeah. Like everyone's trying to be a streamer. That's why. And well, that was the distribution. That's how you got put on was through rapping. That was the only way to touch other people's lives, MTV. You know what I mean? But now it's like shit, video it, games. Yeah. I mean, just are just chatting. Like I can go to Twitch right now, click to see what the number one browse section is, and it's just chatting. And I can click that. It has five hundred thousand viewers, and it's a woman with her kind of top slit down a little bit. Oh, like those types of like cam girl type <laughs> tweets. Uh, that's funny. Like people, people will hop into streams that are just chatting. 
literally her nothing just but just yeah and people just talking because that's just they just want to hang out with them and they want to hang out with the community but and, see and i knew that pay. that was i knew that was the future and i kind of that's why i called it ul's hangouts podcast obviously i didn't know about twitch and how to like implement that though i might i might combine it i might combine forces yeah i i, I don't know why you wouldn't all you have to do is just click record or click stream and then put it on yeah and then put it on i can show yeah, you how to do it it's, it's pretty easy i gotta figure that out um once you once you start getting a following and you want to get into more complex productions then it gets a little more complicated but like um, what like what cam switching you know um being able to have overlays alerts donations um certain goals reach like there's it's just it's just going to come with it like if you do it consistently enough they'll just kind of come with it gotcha. and, then, and then you'll start how do you get a following though by just doing um, it and people consistency you? so consistency is one of them is being every day if you can at a certain time playing a certain game gaming like getting a following what if i don't that game, do games you can do just chatting or podcasting or radio okay um and just people will pop in all the time and say what's up that's wild and then you got to say what's up to them too and then you know who knows maybe some big streamer with thirty thousand views might randomly host you as like a nice gift it happens all the time wow. these people will be like oh yeah just go ahead and host him like it'll make his day <laughs> and like seriously it happens and it makes a cool. person's day and then that person will get like maybe a quarter of a following to stay with them that's cool and then that's how they start their community for sure for sure um and so that's that's definitely a longer shot but it is definitely a possibility so uh, it seems pretty simple especially since i'm already fucking doing it just on a different platform yeah i mean i told i told zach my uh my brother um that um he should just stream because we play Fortnite all fucking day anyways that's what every I'm night saying. we every night we'll play for three or four hours um and i'm like dude why not just stream like you're not you're not losing anything by so doing you it. stream too so I'd, i don't stream because i f- first of all my computer can't handle both at the same time oh really? just because it's, it's a little weaker needs to be like it's like, for 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 gaming for, for gaming, gaming it, it, it needs to be a little stronger so i just don't like that but i do want to stream in the future but at the same time i don't want to be a gaming streamer i want to be like a music streamer got you yeah, but yeah. um i just haven't found the time to do it so i just haven't really i, I haven't put too much focus in it that's the thing yeah so. well you're you got other things going on i think well i think that's more of like a barrier barrier to put why, why is my voice cracking so much today have you noticed that my balls drop bro i guess so shit um no i think uh i think it, that's a higher barrier to entry though because you're actually having to like make music as your stream rather than just like playing oh music, and i could you know? and i could do that easily like i could fuck around and make something for four hours and true. i won't have a problem with it which is why i want to do it but um i just don't i haven't had the desire to really do it recently I, i've had so many of the things going on that i've enjoyed that i i, I don't i don't want to just force a stream just to do it for sure, like, for sure. i want to be in it and I know the only way I'll be in it is if I quit my current job and have income that's going to sustain me, then I yeah. can have the free time to do it. Um, yeah, that's the only, I'm like so busy. The fact that I've been, the only reason I've been able to do this consistently, like every other day is because mm-hmm. I actually like love it and I have other people editing it. <laughs> yeah. And you have it at night too. So it's a nice, nice yeah. Well, nice I, I usually have it during, this is a special nighttime edition. I never oh. have these at night. So you feel pretty fucking lucky. Usually, uh, usually I don't allow my assistant to schedule me like that night. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Your assistant, like, fuck okay. that. I have an assistant for real. Or Chaz, is he in the is is he in the bed? Is Chaz, my assistant. assistant. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you come say? <laughs> oh wow, wow! You want to come out kidding. with something? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just look down at my groin for the people that are listening. Oh, that's true. That's it's right. getting late. Podcast. Wow, this is the late night show. God damn. Cue the music. I'm telling you right now, um, bro. The like variants of like conversations and guests that I have on here, I love because I'm genuinely like I'll yeah. have like I'll have someone like that's like fucking I'll have sisters. Like a, I'll have a very smart guest and we'll have a very intelligent conversation, and then I'll have you and my sister on, and we'll just talk fucking. Oh, okay. Bullshit. Well, first of all, fuck you. Second like, of all, I love talking to like dumb people like you, and then <laughs> actually smart people. First of all, we I'm need to discuss kidding. your fucking sister's story. Oh, what'd she say? About paying for dates, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Look, look. First of all, I want to go go ahead and preface this by saying Tali's a a wonderful woman. Okay. 
Yeah, oh, here great, we go. And, and you better lay in on you. her. Damn, you really buttering her up. You better lay I'll, in I'll, on I'm her. I'm going to lay in by saying she ain't going to find love with this mentality. <laughs> Damn. No, she will. No, okay. Uh, that's a little harsh. Okay, I let, back. let me, let me uh, rephrase that. We, okay, so she is going to find the right guy for her. It'll take longer. She, whether it takes longer or yeah, not is irrelevant. That's what I was trying to. What get I'm to trying to. Like, what I'm trying to tell you is like she needs someone that is that type of guy. Yes. So and I, she needs to address that shit up front. You feel me? She's yes. not the type of girl that's like, I make my own. Like I don't want to be taken care of. I'm an independent black. Like all of this that's, fucking but, shit. But that's not which even is what cool. I'm getting at. Which is cool. Like. It's just, it's not even about the dinner. It's like the signs of like, you know, when you're first dating someone, there's certain things you kind of take into consideration, how they move, whether they pay, whether they open the door, how they treat the waitress, you know, things like that. So mm -hmm. that's one of her things of like, okay, is he a B or an A type of guy? It's just a sign. I mean, look, as someone who's her, who's her brother, the most critical of her, I just don't whatever it's, it's not that serious to me like whatever makes her happy I have this mentality so I totally get what she's talking about and for those who don't know and they're just listening it's how should men or women pay for the first date um if the man asks you out catch my, la catch my last podcast yeah catch last uh, last episode so if someone asks you out should the other person pay for the date and it kind of became a hot topic in her story because I still think they're and say, yeah, like, you know, personally me, I would pay for the date. Like first date. personally, yeah. Per first date for sure. Yeah. But I am not the kind of person that sits, like sits back and goes, Oh, you're a bitch. If you don't like, if like, if like, I won't tell another guy he's weak or he's a oh, bitch or he's soft. No, 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 no. And Was at the same that? time, you know, and at the same, like, basically being like he didn't even hear he didn't even you're hear not, or watch the episode you didn't huh you know it would no like did you watch I, the episode i know but i saw did you the listen? replies no okay i'm talking about her story <laughs> <laughs> in, in her story when she was like oh that's why you're an american oh and it's like that no. bit you the wrong way yeah so like but it's like i get what you're talking about like i totally understand it i don't think it's wrong but at the same time, I do think there is nothing wrong with the girl being like, hey, look, I'll offer to pay. Like, if she just offers to pay, that sits way better in my book. She, I already know she's not going to pay. Like, I already know it. <laughs> oh, is that, were you the guy that said that? Yes. Like, I already know <laughs> she is not going to pay the bill. Like, it, what, like, unless it's like a fucking five grand bill, <laughs> I already know she's not going to pay it. So that's, that's what I'm going into. But at the same time, I'm going to judge you if you don't at least like sit there and go, hey, I, like I can help with half. Yeah. Like if, if you don't even like offer it or like make the attempt to like pull your wallet out, like you're, you're not like you're grabbing the wallet like right here and you know, you're not going to pay it, but like, you're just in your head. You're like, oh, it'll yeah. just look good. And listen, as someone that has been on dates, many dates, like they always like every single one has been like ruffled with their, Shit, yeah. pulled out her wallet. I'm it, like, no, that I enough it. is that for me is perfect. As someone that has experienced that every time, I going back to what you were just saying, how you were not going to call someone a bitch or what I'm not going to call that girl like entitled if she doesn't do that and just automatically accepts me, accepts the fact that I'm paying. I am but like, we're kind of really, yeah, interesting. Okay. I mean, I, I see that is truly, the American, yeah. that is the American in you. No, I mean, I like like to be honest with you. If 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 I ask you out, yes, like you know, you're gonna ask me out. Okay, yeah. What's up? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you you and I both know if I were to ask someone out, um, there's a precedent that I would be paying because I am asking you to do it. Okay? What if she asks you out? Th I get it. I would probably still pay just just, just because <laughs> I feel like I feel like because. That's just who I am. Like I, I am not discrediting the men who do pay. Like that's totally fine. But I'm saying is, I love and appreciate the women of the world who sit there and go, look, this whole men need to pay bullshit and nothing else is not the mentality that I live by. Like I, and and, and this is not some stupid. 
I'm independent. I'm my talking own. about first couple of dates though. We're not talking yeah. about relationships. No, just, just someone, different. but just someone who sits back and goes, you know what? It was like a $35 meal. What's like $12 to me or $13 to me? Like I can definitely help. Like just to have that thought process to me speaks. Okay. She just cares. Yeah. Like, yeah she's, she's an ally. Yeah. Like she's just like, you know what? She's chill. She, she understands the importance of money. She understands like, Hey, yeah. Like, you know, if, if, if this does continue, it's a partnership thing. It's not just, you're going to buy me shit. And yeah. you know, I, no, I feel that, and no, 100%. I, but, but I, I, I totally get, there's a subset of guys who get off to that kind of thing where it's like, let yeah. me flex for you. And I'm not discrediting those guys either. They probably work very hard to have that thing. Yeah. You know, they work and hard to take about girls that. and, 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 and LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No dog. Like I, I, I hear you. And I think that is a good point. Like, is she the type of girl that like always, um, like expects, shit and like you have to do everything and pay for everything at all that can be a side for that if she doesn't even read she's just tolly's a little corrupt in that sense a little bit i get what she's trying to say but she is a little corrupt in that sense in the sense of like she's like i'm not even gonna pretend i'm just i'm getting you're gonna pay and like i, I don't it. i, I don't think and that plus, mentality sets um, you up well plus she lives in philadelphia like bro just keep there's a lot of context to to, to be had like there's just the people move a little bit differently over there. Um, I'm sure there's but a listen, lot more I, people who want to flex. As 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 someone, I'm gonna pay. But if you're a dude and um, you don't pay, you're not a bitch. You're not. It's not a bad thing. It's just if keep in mind. About it. Keep if in mind. About it. Keep it. I think the perfect scenario is her. Yeah, the perfect. We can both agree that most optimal scenario. One that not only shows that the guy is generous and willing to take care of the woman, but also the woman clearly is showing the fact that she's not the type of woman to take advantage, not the type of woman that won't, you know, pull her end of the weight is if you pay, offer to pay and then she reaches, but then you say no, and then you end up paying, which is what yes. happens. Every, that's a beautiful thing. That's and it the, happens more times than not. That's the most optimal scenario, right? Yeah. The both of those extremes to the right and the left of that scenario I just stated are flawed. Yeah, and I but I do think more happens. I do think the more flawed or oh, what am I trying to say? The thing that happens the most that's flawed is there are a certain subset of women that just will not even consider it. Yeah, and I've that, I've never dated is, uh, Tolly's. I've never dated a a, a girl that I haven't either. I would. I think. Like, I think to be honest, acts with like you, the I check would, isn't there. <laughs> well, I think to be honest, you and I, our type of guys, would sniff that out first, and we'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. no, I would never invite a girl but, like that. But um, at the, the same time, there 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 are guys who like to have that. Like, no, like I'm going to take you out to a nice place. I'm going to, you know cherish you i'm going i don't to care leave. if you take advantage of it or you don't yeah act like and, you're gonna like you know, I, don't, I don't even care but if it's two mutuals and one's not a fucking balling person yeah like i i part of me does expect you to look at me as a mutual and be like okay like i will offer to help i don't fully expect it and i know the other person doesn't either but yeah. just the gesture of it yeah well my thing is also like um the gesture is optimal, but my, my, like, even if I am in a position where I don't have a ton of money and that 20, 30 bucks that her meal is plus the drink or whatever is kind of a lot. I think it shows even more that I like, Hey, like I'll even pay for that. Like that's how, like, if I ask a girl on a date, that means I probably see something there that I like, not like, Oh, like she's good enough, but like, I'm willing to set that time aside. You're willing to set that time aside. And we're willing to go out on a date like it is going down. It's formal. It's like all this shit, right? So it's like I'm putting my skin in. I'm investing in this like potential, whatever it may be. And it just makes that girl feel like, oh, like he cares. Like there's like that like but chill that out. But that has process. nothing to do with money, though. That has nothing to do with you paying. No, just, no, just putting it's in not the about effort the of like scheduling and being like, I know where to go. I'm going to take you place. That's more than enough for a lot of people. Yeah, it's not even about being more than enough. I just want to feel like I can. I'm doing that even, you know, extra and like take. It's not even about the money. Most people can afford their own food or even to pay for that other person. We can agree on that. It's not about the money. It's about the fact that you're saying, "Hey, like I'm gonna take the lead on this. I'll pay. I came out with all. I'm." 
for me, how I was raised maybe, or where I came from, I'm very comfortable Same being, here. being the general, like, Hey, I'm going to take care of whatever and I'm going to pay. And you know, it's not that serious. You can pretend like you're going to pay or it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to yeah, take But care. like speaking of like first date scenarios, like I will heavily judge you. If you did not reach, ask, if you did not at least reach an offer, man, I feel like I, I don't want to put girls under that like because they I can tell every time that they already feel that anxiety of like does he want me to pay oh like I remember I was like, looking like, I remember like, I was looking through my wallet and uh, I wanted to pay with my credit card because I hadn't like I never used my credit card and I was like oh shit like I want to use it and then I was like and I didn't know where it was and I was like oh fuck where is this thing and like I almost fumbled she. I bet she like she thought that I was like almost like trying to avoid it and being like, oh, like, where's my card? Like I had all yeah. my cards there, like all my debit she cards and stuff, it. but I couldn't find that specific card. She's yeah. like, oh, are, are you sure? Do you, do you want me? And I could tell like this like panic of like, because this is such a big thing in like you know like dating and like all it doesn't this need shit to be, though that's it doesn't it's not that serious it's it's it, it, and that's what i'm telling you is it's like it's not that serious like the guy shouldn't always be expected to pay everything and like if it, yeah. if it turns out like you have a great date and, it, and at the end of it you guys do split the bill who the fuck cares it's not my biggest thing bro this is my women listeners are gonna get gonna get probably mad at me all one of them i i everything (laughs) everything everything (laughs) is like everything you do with the women she's gonna fucking remember that shit so my thing is like i'm trying to put myself in a position where i am putting my best foot forward some women some women will like they'll be like oh yeah i'll pay it's fine and then like a week, a month later, like you get in a fight or like she gets mad at just, you and like then it's not you tell there's it. some t- tension. Yeah, it's not that serious. But my thing is like, I just, I just, I just want to take care of it for my own. Like, I just don't even give a fuck. Just yeah, to not it, even it, have it be an issue. That is great. If you it's don't want to be an that issue, serious. that's fine. But at the end of the day, my entire point was I, I judge you based on the fact that if you go out of your way or not to at least offer to at least show that you look at this as not a situation where you're benefit like benefiting from something and finesse the meal. And like I've had people finesse girls, meals off me all the time. Yeah, people finesse meals off me all the time before. And I was like, and I've sat there and I'm like, okay, genuinely I don't care. First of all, you were horrible to be around. <laughs> for real. Second of all, you literally finesse me for twenty bucks. Like, are you a second fucking of all, crack? It's, it's fifteen fucking dollars. <laughs> I can I can give you fifteen dollars. I could just you could have just you. like yeah, for real, not wasting my time. And like I, but I totally get it. And if that's their agenda, fuck it, I don't care. But at the same time, if I'm genuinely interested in you dating, like Holly, for example, uh, my girlfriend of two years now, um, our our first date was. She was like, hey, let's go to a park and we're going to play Uno. Did she take the lead? She took the lead. She's a gangster, though. Exactly. And, it, it, and in my head, I thought, oh, shit. Okay, I've never done this before. Ooh. I and like so I was like, cool. Lead. So it, it worked out really well. And then we went to Tilt because I was like, hey, I'm hungry. Like, let's go eat. So we went I'm to still, Tilt. Fuck. I know it's fire. It sounds so good fuck. right now. So we, we both ate there. Then she was like, hey, yeah, like I can offer to pay because. And okay. She's got I'm money, gonna, though, I feel like. I'm going to say this and I'm going to really mean this here. And I don't mean to call out your sister. I don't mean to call anyone in particular. But I do think, and first of all, for those who don't know, Holly is uh, six years older than me. Okay. For those who do not know, the older you are as a woman, you do not care. Yeah, it's 20. What's 20 bucks? Like, she is a career woman, well established. Her finances are straight and priorities are straight. Okay. She could have men pay for any meals they want because they want to date her. That's fine. She doesn't care. She's not insecure in that nature. She's not sitting here being like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm here to have a good time. I can spend the money. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, Like if if I was like, Hey, yeah, like I just don't have the money or I was like, Hey, yeah, I forgot my wallet at home. It's not like we weren't going to go on the date then and like in two days, like she loved it and she would have been just fine with it. But did you reach for your wallet, like pretending or like, oh, like, hey, I can pay like a girl like you? No, I paid it. But what I'm saying is hypothetically. Yeah. Oh, so you paid for that second date? No, it was the same day. Oh, as the. Okay. Got it. But she at least like pulled her wallet out and she was like, yeah, take my card. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, 
put it back like you're okay. So you paid. What are you saying right now, dog? The the act of being like like putting yeah, in like okay, listen, your listen, half. Listen, listen, listen. Actions would it, would it, have, would it have made a break? Would it have made or break? Jesus Christ, it's getting late. <laughs> would it would it have made or <laughs> would it have made or? <laughs> Would it would it bro, would it have been a make Today, or Junior? break? Would it have been a make or break scenario? No. If you didn't. No, no, of course not. That's not the point I'm trying. And to that's but the, but that's the, the problem. Is some people mind, have keep that. Keep in mind, you paid. Yes, keep that in I, mind though, and you issue, got her. The issue was There's never. There, is there not a correlation there? No, because There's the no issue was no because because she paid for dates going forward. Because I, yeah, I yeah, but you paid did. for the first one. We're but talking about first date. She paid for the second date. But that was three days later. Dates. We're Movie. talking about first dates. Nah, nah, nah. You lost to this. I don't know why you brought that <laughs> shit up. You fucked yourself over. <laughs> the point nah, you is, lost. you the paid point for the is, first one. Why are you bringing this up? Because my point is, it's not about whether or not you paid. It's about the relationship in that person. No, is 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 the other person who is not paying like at least to at least be like, hey, I am caring enough to put part of this in. Like to be honest, dog, I'm gonna keep it 100. I think most girls offer to pay just because of like societal pressure to like make everything equal. I think I like if we're talking about like 40 years ago, like it would have not even have been a question that the women would not have paid. I'm gonna put I mean, that out there right now. I yes and no, because I, like, I think Tolly's my sister and she's very like outspoken and she's the first one that I've heard to be like, okay, listen, like let's cut the bullshit. I don't care about this like 2020 like equality and like all this shit at the end of the day like i want a guy that he's gonna pay because he's the man i don't know man this is this the devil's in the details let's leave on this note though i think that's enough i think that'll give the, the listeners and the viewers enough to uh think about the devil's in the details the devil's in the details you man. cornball i love saying that shit i love it, it. shuts down every t- all the talk because everything's the devil's in the details um but yeah peter mazako uh thank you for coming on the show the og uh podcast guest uh do you want to plug anything your socials or your po- your podcast um make just go to make action. contain action that's that's that yeah that's all i care about for sure make contain action on any platform apple spotify google play youtube twitch twitter um all of those and then go to manscape.com use code mca 20 percent off free shipping uh, damn maybe, that's code MCA. i didn't say you could plug a product that's not fair yeah. well there you go uh go to my instagram y-o-e-l-a-y-n-a-l-e-m my full name and then uh subscribe to this show uh leave a review um yeah leave five stars if you think it's five stars if you think it's four leave four you know so on and so forth <laughs> i'm i gotta work on that like line yeah um, I, I can do it i right, go for it What's the name of the show again? Uh, Hangouts? Yoel's Hangouts Podcast. Okay. And that is the Yoel's Hangout Podcast, guys. Thanks for coming along. If you can, please leave a five-star review on Apple, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. That would be lovely. Uh, Leave a comment as well. We we really appreciate that. Thanks. You know what's funny? I'm going to actually use that audio for the podcast moving forward. (laughs) I'm dead fucking serious too. Yeah, you just you just gotta you just gotta write something. I mean, we we re- like repeat the you know uh, welcome to the Make Contain Action podcast where two dudes with similar voices talk about content, pop culture, gaming, and more. Um, I am your host number one. Like, like we, it's the same fucking thing every time. I like that. I like yeah, that. yeah, so, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. The, yeah. What you just said, and I'm gonna yeah, clip yeah. it up and put it in. I'm gonna my uh, royalties. No, you're good. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, your body. Good night. Peace out, Peter. Bye. Peace. This is Yoel's Hangouts Podcast. Please comment, rate, and subscribe to the show. I truly appreciate the support.